Welcome to Job Form. My name is George, and today I'm going to show you how to build a form without coding. That's right, you don't need to know PHP or any other coding language. You can use our easy to use drag and drop builder and our easy to use shareable options. So, in this video, we're going to cover how to build a form from scratch so you can build your own. Well, let's go jump over to my desktop to show you how right now. Okay, this is our job form dashboard. To get started, let's go to create a form. We're gonna start from scratch and we have two options. One is classic form and the second one is card form. I will be showing you both in this video. Let's get started with card form. Okay, now we have our job form builder. Now you're going to understand that it's super easy to build and practically anyone can build a form on job form. So let's go ahead and open up our form elements on the left. This is where we have our main elements, where we're going to ask our users when we add the form. For example, if you want to ask the user for the full name, the address, the email, and we might want to use this for an appointment, we can drag in the appointment system. We also have more options on the left for elements like short text, if you want to ask for questions, long text. So for example, for short text, we can use it for a question, like let's just say, what is your age? All right, that could be a basic question. We can also add a drop down menu. For example, if we add this right here, we can change the subject really quickly to something like what size shirt are you? Okay, and then we have the drop down options. So if we click on them, we can say, for example, small, medium, large and we can add extra large extra small or whatever you want to use this drop down menu for we have several ones like multiple choice numbers images file uploads so if you want to use this for example if you want them to include the their id their contract some type of file that you want to add a screenshot well we can use the file uploader if we add it right there and it gives us the file options to upload right here now, there's several options that we have available aside from just adding the element. Each element that we add has the options properties. So if you click on properties, we open the properties on the right. And each individual element has different properties depending what it's for. In this case, we open the file upload element. So we have the properties for this one. So we can change the title from here also. We can make it required. So if we want the user to actually use it and they can't submit the form unless they fill this out, we make it required. Valid, validate the file size, sub label. We have more options for this one. Let's go into options. We can limit the file size. We can do, we can keep it on or off. It's recommended that you keep it on because someone might try to upload five gigabytes, 10 gigabytes, 10 gigabytes file and well, that, that's a really big file. So it's a good option to limit it. You, you can set the limit for the minimum and the maximum and allow the file types. So in this case, if we are just looking for images, well, we can remove all of these, for example, and we'll just keep, for example, JPG, JPEG, PNG, and GIF. This is just an example. And we keep those and it's only going to allow those type of files available. So we can add or remove the file types right there. We got multiple options like limit the number of files. So we could say, you know what? We're only going to allow five of these files and we have more advanced options available. Now that's just for the file upload. If we want to use, for example, more options for the name, let's go into properties. Let's open this and we have more options available. Again, we can make it required. We have the sub labels. We have several options right here. If we want to ask for the middle name, the prefix and the suffix, well, we enable those or we disable them. Just like that, we can make this a drop down. So if they click on it, it's going to ask for Mr., Mrs., Ms., and all those options available there. We have more options, for example, for address. And those are several types of elements that we can get started for the form. Next thing we have is the form designer. So if we open up the form designer, we can customize the colors, the background, even add a video to it. So for example, if we want to change the scheme color, well, we have these pre color schemes. So if we click on them, we can create them or we can remove it. Now, if we select one of these, we have the options available for them down here. So for example, if that kind of blue is not what you're looking for, well, we can tweak it a bit right here 
and use the one you want. We also have the styles. If you want to customize the form with, for example, label alignment, let me show you what this does. For example, we have 752 pixels. And if we change it to, for example, 900, well, it's a little bit wider because we're customizing the style here. We have question spacing. We can limit these. So if you want to make the, the form a little bit more compact, that's available. Label width, the type of font, the font size, the button style. And if we want to use CSS, we can use custom CSS down here. We have available themes that are already ready to use. So for example, um, sun, sunset hair, if we use this one, it's going to load it in. And we have this really nice looking form available. We have a background image and everything's customized to that type of theme. We can use it as default or we can remove the theme if we like. Or maybe there's another theme that you want to use. Let's just say this one is something that you're looking for. Well, we can use these to get started. There's several things available that we can choose from. We also have the layout options. Remember, we had the option in the beginning to use a classic form or a card form. Well, we can switch it right here. I will be showing you that also in this video. OK, let's close the form designer. We also have the options for payments. So if you want to use your form to sell products, services, or donations, that's available right here by adding our payment gateways. There's several payment gateways available to use here on JotForm. And we also have widgets. These are really awesome because they give you more power to your forms. For example, we can add the e-signature form calculator, take photos, checklist, and there's several widgets available for several types of tasks. Depending what you need, it's most likely that we have it here on the widgets. Now, if you're good to go with the form that you have, let's just say that you have the elements that you need, you have everything ready. Well, we're going to go into settings. Settings have several options available right here. Remember, we're just going through these quickly. We do have video tutorials for every single one of these steps in depth videos. So we have the form settings available right here, like the form title. So we can say form for video. We have the form status. Is it going to be enabled or disabled or disabled on the date? So for example, these could be used for a concert. Let's just say that you have a submission form um, before the date of the concert. Well, you could disable it right after the concert. Just a quick example. All right. And we have other type of options available. We have more of a watch items right here. We have email options. Conditions is a really great feature that we have, which enables you to add conditional logic to your form. It automates a process to show and hide fields. For example, let's just say that we're asking for the age of a person. So if the person is over aged, well, we can show or hide fields depending on the age that they have. And this is a, this is enabled through conditional logic. So if this happens, then do that. And that's what conditions does. Now we can use other type of conditions like update calculated fields, enabled required fields, skip to hide page, change the thank you page, change the email recipient based on the answers. And all of this is based if something happens and then do this. We can also change the thank you page. We have several integrations available like WordPress, PayPal, Zoom, and there's many more Google Sheets, Stripe. HubSpot, and there's several integrations that we have available, including webhooks and Zapier, which automates your forms. We also have approval flows in case you want to turn this form into an approvals form. We also have mobile notifications, which is available for the App Store and Google Play Store. Now, if we go into publish, we can easily share our form. When we finish building it, it's super easy to share it and start using it. Let's just say that we want to use our form. Well, all we have to do is copy this link and open in a new tab. So let's just go ahead and open it. And here's our form. Just like that, you build the form and you have a shareable link that you can use. The other ways that we can share our form is by embedding the form. So in this case, if you want to embed it on a site that you want to have your site display the form, we could just embed it. We also have a signed form, email, prefill, PDF, and third party platforms if we want to integrate more quickly. Each one of these platforms, if we click on them, we have the instructions on how to do it. And there's several platforms available that we can integrate JotForm into them. So for example, there's Blogger, Facebook, Zara, Tumblr, Drupal, and several other more. So it's super easy to integrate. Now let's go back to form and we're going to create a really quick card form. So it's going to create a form, start from scratch. We're going to select card form this time. So let's select card form. 
And now we're going to be able to drag our elements inside of this form, which is a step form. So let's add a couple of elements to show you how it works. We're going to ask for the name, the phone, the email, and let's choose one more just for demo purposes. This drop down. Okay. Let's go ahead and preview our form. Let's click on preview. And what's going to happen next is that our form is based on steps. These are really great if you don't want to have your users feel overwhelmed with a lot of questions or a long form. In this case, it makes it easier for them to just go to the next question. In this case, we can go to start. We can add our information right here really quickly. Go next. And as you can see, it jumps to the next question. It's a card form. Our drop down menu, which doesn't have any questions, but just for demo purposes and submit. So that's how a card form works. So as you can see, it's super easy to build your own form without knowing coding. All you have to do is drag and drop the elements that you need, tweak the properties of each element, and then just use a share link or embed it on the third party platform. Just like that, you can build your form. Well, we thank you all for watching and we'll see you on our next tutorials.